We're anticipating a rush right beforehand. Probably. That'll be a, sorry they missed any. Okay, well, welcome. This afternoon we've got a two-hour session here. That seems a little longer than I was thinking because I don't know if I filled her up with two hours, but we might get close, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, and, and the main focus of this afternoon session was to really dive into details on the two long-term projects that our preventive maintenance team came up with, maintaining poor pavements, that's uh, Joel Corzelius. Uh, so you'll get to, to see and, and meet the lead investigators of both these projects, PCC patching with Justin Latchley. Uh, then Joe also does the uh, short-term synthesis. So he's gonna get into the diamond grinding and lightly surface roads, a, a summary on those. Those haven't started yet, so uh, not as much detail there. Then we're gonna get into a, an ID, IQ, or whatever term, so indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, type of contracting method, things that you can do for uh, concrete pavements or really any type of pavements uh, in, in trying to improve performance, uh, increase the, the, the dollars, cover more of your system and things like that. So uh, let's start first with maintaining poor pavements. Come on up, Joe. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'll try to use these two as I go along. Uh, Joe, we want to improve for people. We don't want to maintain them. <laughs> well, and that's what we're going to do. All right. I got a little payment management uh, slide in here, too. You know, and this, a lot of this is that the NRA, the good thing about talking to Joe Mead is the communication that it really brings out. And I had a... Uh, um, kind of a encounter with communication. I'm teaching my 15 year old to drive and we were going through a four way stop. And of course, uh, three cars came to that four way stop at once and we were going straight through and the person coming from the uh, perpendicular direction waved everybody through and that the opposite person was making a left turn. So they're waving my daughter through and she said, well, should I go? And I said, yes. <laughs> so she proceeded very slowly to edge out and cross the road. And the, and the person, I won't uh, genderize, on the other side of the road became, uh, started flapping their gums quite a bit. <laughs> but their windows were up so you couldn't hear what they were saying, which was good. We drove another block and she said, was that person mad at me? And I said, oh no, they were singing to the radio. <laughs> so it's really, there's a lot of verbal, nonverbal communication and, and that's what we all do. So this is about, we're just really getting started on this study, uh, probably this past winter, and so we're not very far. We're really on step two, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but this is about a pavement that has, in a sense, uh, uh, come to the end or near end of its, its uh, useful life. So it's got uh, ride numbers that are high. It's got uh, structural cracking throughout. And what we're looking at is what can we do to extend that life? In other words, there's no funding available at this time. Uh, where are we gonna, what are we gonna do? So do we leave it as is? Uh, I think those are the questions that we're, we're trying to get at. How much money should I spend on it? So realistically, we're um, maintaining a poor pavement, Dave. <laughs> and if your system tells us it's getting poor sooner, we know not to. So anyways, so here's what we're really trying to do. Um, we're trying to identify the performance improvements, so uh, a big chunk of it, and the durability uh, for an HMA pavement that has reached its, uh, it becomes poor or is in poor condition from the application of a thin surface treatment. And uh, that's very important to understand. And typically we're looking at low volume roads. You're not gonna see a lot of this on a higher volume road. If you do, that's fine. Well, but it, the applicability is typically on low volume roads. And as you can see, we're typically those thin surface treatments are used as a blue line there to extend pavement life and, and get good service and smoothness and um, reduce cracking and, and get a lot, of, a lot of bang for your buck. What we're doing this at, at this point is trying to define how much bang for your buck you're getting when you do it at the bottom of the curve. So what's that initial improvement that you're gonna get? as well as how long will you have any kind of improvement? Um, 
maybe that goes up to a four and then two weeks later it's down to a two again. We don't know and I think it's I think it's going to vary uh, from project to project, but that's kind of what we're doing. We're on the red line here. Um, let's see. So um, the project goals were defined by the what do you call a technical advisory group or a panel. And then the, so we're looking at what are the practices that people are using to extend uh, payment life. Uh, you've got a payment in poor condition. What is it people are doing? Uh, I think a lot of times these uh, thin surface treatments are used actually fairly uh, widely used maybe by maintenance folks. Um, maybe they, and they just don't necessarily report it, but they have to hold their payments together. That's their task. And so that's 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 the important part to remember. And sometimes that's in your payment management system. Sometimes it's not because they've just decided to do it. Um, and what are the results? Have we really identified the results? So if we know what was done, even if it wasn't necessarily planned through a, a contracting process, but maybe a, 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 a maintenance supervisor decided, I'm going to chip seal this road because I got to do something. I can't do nothing. Uh, hopefully we can capture that information too. It wasn't necessarily a planned research project. And then we want to summarize the practices being uh, well, we want to know what the results are. Hopefully, if we have some payment management data, I think often we're collecting it on an annual or biannual scale. Um, uh, so we can use that information. The, the key will be finding that project, but most states are collecting the information. And then we want to summarize the practices being performed, whether intentional or unintentional. Well, actually, they're all intentional, but may not be part of a research study. And then the performance, and then also we want to tie that to cost because what's more important, what's most important in the in, in, to, is to define benefit in terms of dollars saved. So if you're not saving any dollars, why bother? And I think that's the big key. If you are saving dollars, well, let's hope they don't decide that we need to do that every two years because it saves money. It's a lot, it becomes a lot of work. So, so here's a, the project task as they're defined. Again, we're on the collect data task. So we've completed a literature review. And I, I, th I think I just got an email from Jerry this week that said, here, add this to your literature review. So I think it, uh, it, it can be a uh, somewhat living document. Uh, certainly, if things come up, we want to incorporate that as part of our analysis over the next year. And I have another example of that. And then uh, um, so we have a pretty full literature review, I think. Uh, so people have some uh, uh, reference documents to go to for some additional information. We're on the collect data, uh, which is uh, tomorrow when I get to the office, I'm going to throw out the questions to the TAP or the, to the states, I guess. I think they're different, uh, the participating states, in order to collect this data. And we'll go through what some of that is. Then again, hopefully we'll get responses back here in the next month or two where we can start uh, analyzing that data and analyzing it as grouping it um, uh, uh, based on the, you know, the starting condition, uh, what was what was performed. You maybe do a couple of different uh, treatments. It may not be one. It could be a double chip seal. It could be patching. It could be crack sealing and then a chip. So there's a number of things that can be done, uh, and try to group those things together and then uh, run that by the uh, tap again or the uh, states and see if that's appropriate and then uh, uh, report that in a final re in a draft and final report hopefully completed by next May that's the intent I think where we started was to get everybody on the same page so we're working with uh, five or six states here um, and everybody has a different terminology um, so the first thing would, that I want to do is start with, okay, what are we really looking at? So we can get, provide people some guidance in terms of the thin surface treatments. Now, if you're a state and you, and you get these questions and you're, the thin surface treatment you use isn't on this list, you know, hopefully you'll add it. This isn't to, meant to or intended to exclude anything. It's intended to just uh, have some sort of standardization and reference. And if you have a different name for any of these that you use in your state, I think the best thing to do would be to put that name or in parentheses behind it. Let us know what you're using so that we can add that um, into, into the document. I think that'll be really important. So you can see there's a number of different surface treatments we came up with. 
Um, in addition to this, you might do a pretreatment such as patching uh, and crack sealing. So anything you do for pretreatment, we'd also like that identified as well. And, and uh, so we'll see that. No, but somebody might try it right on top of a broken up uh, low volume pavement. Okay. So that's why we, that's the thought pattern. In other words, would you ever try that? So I think it's important to include anything we consider a thin surface treatment versus um, um, and then, and we'll talk about that later with the lightly surface roads uh, study. That's the short term study. But for this one, just wanted to include anything that anybody potentially might want to try. That doesn't mean they've tried it. This is it's a thin surface treatment. So we completed that literature review actually in April, not May. Um, and it, it, we were looking for, uh, you know, for lack, lack of better terminology, Googling um, different reports. And this is one that came up. Um, oh, I think it's important, if I can go back, uh, to look at, we're looking at what a thin surface treatment is. We defined it as less than two inches. So a two inch overlay is not a thin surface treatment in this that we're looking at. We're considering that a two inch overlay. So, I mean, if it's a 1.75 inch overlay, uh, technically would fall in there. Hopefully we're limited even to less than an inch. I think the goal is to get that to as thin as possible. Um, so one of the interesting studies that we did encounter was this one from Iowa that's ongoing right now. Uh, it was supposed to be finished uh, this past winter or this spring. It was extended. Uh, uh, they added some concrete sections to the study, but it, it, it very much parallels uh, what we're looking for, the information we're trying to do here. And they did some intentional test sections um, for evaluation of these thin sections. And they call them holding strategies. So for deteriorated and low volume roads. Um, and they were looking at the performance for some of their sections. So it's a little different terminology, but it's pretty much parallel to this to what this study is about. Um, I contacted the researchers on that, and it it is not finished. Um, uh, they are they are extending this to do I believe thin surface treatments over concrete. I believe that's what they're intending to do. Anyways, but it sound it, the study found that a holding strategy can be successfully employed by selecting treatments that use a combination of thin hot mix overlay surface treatments and in place recycling. I think that's a little more extreme in terms of the, that, that to me sounds more like rehabilitation as opposed to um, what we're looking for in this study. I think they were doing some more cold in place recycling, uh, maybe some uh, uh, stabilized full depth reclamation. And so we'll be going through that, but I think Again, I think this uh, parallels some of what they want to do. I think there is, our studies are limited to, uh, and they do have sections with less, less structure or thinner treatments on, on poor pavements. And then there's this one funded by MnDOT, uh, cost-effective means of managing pavements in poor condition. I would say that this, uh, where this one leaves off is where we want to want to pick up with this study. Uh, this is more about, um, I think they, they say um, identify treatments uh, that could be used to extend service life, but they really didn't delve into performance of those or cost of those as much as uh, generalized costs. Um, so those are the two through the literature search of the most <laughs> applicable um, studies, one complete. One uh, that was extended, but uh, I think the information we would be looking for parallels, that's complete. Uh, so we'll be getting more from, and I'm just saying, I know uh, Iowa is not part of the NRA at this point, um, but just staying in contact with those uh, uh, researchers, um, and they're happy probably to give us some information if that's helpful. Um, so we're on the next step, which is collecting data from the NRA states. And so we have developed a list of questions, and I'll go through those in a minute, with the intent of compiling the, the application, uh, the performance that was measured, hopefully, and then the cost data. 
And I think whatever we have for cost data, we'll be able to obviously, if it's paid for by a square yard price, if it's paid for by item, you know, gallons and then tons of chips, regardless, I think uh, we'll be able to normalize that into a standard price across, um, across the different projects based on area. And then we'll probably take that and do a per lane mile type uh, analysis on that. And so the data that we're collecting is, is, you know, obviously what was done, how well did it work initially, how long did it work, and then uh, which is gets us to the durability and then the cost. So again, we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, the performance of these thin surface treatments. I think it's important to note how poor the condition of the road was initially and how much it improved and then how long it lasted. So that, that's really in a nutshell where we're going. And um, let's maybe run through some of the questions. And if anybody has comments on these, yep. How are you going to normalize the condition among the different states? Because we all analyze them differently. Yep. So if we're going to create a common playing field as far as cracking and stuff like that, are you going to we're going to go map twenty one uh, requirements as far as ride percent cracking stuff like that? Yep, and we had a little bit of conversation on that. I think what, right now we're going to see what we can get back first, but I, we're hoping to do the big piece that was identified is to look at ride, IRI, because most of these pavements are going to be cracked up, let's face right. it. Their, their structural rating is going to be low regardless of the system you use. So we're going to place, for lack of better term, a lower value on that in terms of performance, and we're really going to focus on ride, I think. And then if we can get raw data in terms of IRI, I think that's pretty standard measurement. So that's that's my hope. And I understand everybody, you know, the cracking, people are using a different system. I think MnDOT even uses just an automated system. Uh, it's going to use a paver, and I'm not familiar with what everybody's using. Right. But but the assumption is you're you're regardless of the system, you're in crack condition. Yep. So and you haven't really improved it by painting it with a thin surface treatment necessarily, but it looks better and hopefully it rides better, but I think it's the customer service piece of it. I don't think any of these are done with the expectation that they last either. Um, we hope, we don't know, we hope. Uh, the focus obviously is gonna be on lower volume roads, but um, it's amazing how, how long some of these can last actually. Um, I think we'll be, I think in the end, we'll, the results are gonna show actually they last some of them can last quite a while. If you have, especially if you have a stable subgrade, and maybe if you couple that with some patching or crack sealing as a pretreatment. So uh, our first question is to provide a listing of those pavement segments in poor condition uh, that received a thin treatment. I mean, how many of these are out there that we can identify? Actually, you know, that's the first thing to do. And wh and what was the surface treatment used? And let's, we, you know, we're hoping again to go back to those reference uh, definitions and uh, a lot of flexibility in there. You know, I, in those definitions, we describe it. So if, yeah, and we're going to group those in the end, I think, and say, um, you know, I don't know if chip seal is a big difference from microsurfacing in terms of supporting, but, but we'll have those discussions as we move along. Um, and then, uh, and um, okay, then we're hopefully people have IRI data and I had that first. Uh, I think that's gonna be most important as we discussed. And then the, the structural rating, I think we still wanna get that information. I think it's uh, particularly the initial prior to application is more important than actually a year or two later. Um, but I think we do wanna look at that certainly. If somebody's using Rejuvenator, maybe that makes a huge difference. We wanted, we're looking at maybe when it comes to structural rating, if the different states are using different systems, we're looking for the improvements measured within their system, not necessarily comparing it from one system to the other. So I think that's one way to can incorporate that data in there effectively. So Joel, yep. would, you, would you throw out um, a ride level because you may, um, tend to put one treatment on, you know, 1.5 or one, would you be able to find that from the study or do you think that's going to make a difference? 
I think if I had the questions up there, I think we put an IRI number in there. Okay. I thought we put, did we put one? Or four? Yeah. Yeah. We identified, and I don't have them on me, and I should remember them because obviously I have a good memory. Um, but I, we have an IRI defined in there. So when people get the questions, hopefully tomorrow, it'll say, you know, we're looking for roads with IRI greater than, I think, it, I thought it was. Well, 90 or 120 or something. Looking more for the treatments that they did on that type of roadway. Oh, IR like if they stratified it? Right. In other words, if I'm between 90 and 120, I did this. If I do 120, well, there's going to be a different question on that coming up. Okay. So let's go, let's run through them all. And maybe we do modify them. And that's kind of feedback I'm looking for, you know, making some suggestions so that we can do, a, you know, hopefully not a, like 10 rounds of follow-up questions, maybe uh, a couple follow-up questions. Um, so let's run through them though. That might um, might be explained further. But um, and then the cost of the surface treatment, of course, um, regardless of how you paid for that, whether by item, whether it's a lump sum uh, area, uh, I don't care. Um, how did you pay for it? I think we'll be able to figure something out to make it uh, fit within the system, similar to, to structural rating. And then. Um, when was the rehabilitation performed? I mean, if it's five or 10 years ago, I don't care. Uh, if we have data for it, it's, it's, it's good to me. Um, we do want some basic structural history of the road. Um, uh, I'm looking for not necessarily the construction history. You know, we did an overlay in 1967, then we did another one in 1983, and then we milled it and over. I'm not looking for that necessarily. I'm really looking for thicknesses. What, what's out there? Um, in relative age, um, initially constructed, um, had a couple million overlays. So the bottom four inches is, you know, 40 years old and the upper two inches is 20 years old. And uh, just some generalized information so that we can kind of categorize it. Um, but I, hopefully that's not going to play a big role in terms of um, the analysis, but it might. So we want to have that information. Uh, I might reorder these a little bit, but uh, also, uh, I would go number eight uh, case studies from the member states um, that was that was recently added. Uh, that was a suggestion and it's a description of roads that are in poor condition and where the treatment was applied intentionally to extend the life. Um, so if you know it's more we're looking for a narrative a little bit there more than just data. Something that we can kind of get a deeper understanding of the intent behind that. Um, question number nine, please describe the most significant distresses being addressed. Um, in a thin asphalt pavement, you probably have um, alligator cracking. In a thick asphalt pavement, you're probably going to have uh, wide transverse cracks. So what was, uh, what was the most significant distresses visible? You know, what was, what was trying to be, what was, what was driving that ride number down? What was driving that structural number down? Uh, what, why was it in poor condition? And then as a 10th question, and this will be the last question we're going to ask in this, in this initial round of questions, is please describe the methodology of the decision-making process followed to select the rehabilitation application. I think that's important. And we're looking for a short narrative on, you know, for these reasons, I selected this approach. This was a thin pavement with alligator cracking at a sand subgrade that was in great condition. It was in, it was dry. So I did a scrub seal and a chip seal or how, how, whatever you did. And I used a rejuvenator. Uh, you know, I think those are important. The narrative is equally as important as the data, I think, in terms of what people were thinking, what was their intent behind uh, their approach. Um, so that's helpful, uh, I think, in terms of where we're going just to get a, a well-rounded or broad understanding. I think the next step will be again, uh, the analysis of that data when we put all that together. So we're looking for the effectiveness, the initial effectiveness of that, of that fix. You know, how well did, what kind of bounce did we get off the bottom? Did we go from 2.0 to 2.9? Did we go from 2.0 to 3.5? I think those are important um, to understand. Um, what's, the, what's the expectation and uh, what was the real, what did we realize for benefit there? Um, 
you know, and then and then uh, what was the performance? What's the we're looking at the rate of loss of that um, of that ability or that ride, so to speak. How how quickly did we get a poor ride after that? Maybe maybe it was two weeks. Maybe it was three years. I think that's important in the benefit cost study that we want to do and understanding if this is a good approach or a bad approach. Certainly when people see you out on a road, they expect more than two weeks. Often they expect more than two or three years. So um, that's, a, that's a hugely important piece of uh, the work we do are the expectations. And then the comparison of the different treatment performance, obviously we're gonna kind of, kind of group them together and see what kind of performance we're getting um, and where we're going with that. And then the cost of each treatment. Again, the, uh, it's a cost benefit analysis or a life cycle cost analysis, however you want to term it. And the initial cost. I think a lot of these, um, the initial cost is equally as important. How much money of your budget do you want to spend on this? Uh, you know, uh, if you're going to reconstruct, do you want to spend a lot? Do you want to spend a little? So then our final report, we're expected to do out in exactly one year. I think uh, that's what we've kind of defined. So there'll be a draft report, hopefully, you know, a few months prior to that, that folks can look at. And then uh, obviously that the uh, project goals are to provide states with some guidance on making their decisions for using thin surface treatments when your road is already in poor condition. And uh, obviously you can see the, had the, web page out there. So we're not very far along on that, this study, you know, we've just started, but I think it's a good study. And I think there's some parallel, there's obviously some parallel local interest on that as well. So I think it's a, it's a good time for this, um, especially as budgets dwindle and um, we get more buses and trains. We're getting a train here. Another one. <laughs> maybe. It's still a maybe. So anyways, are there any questions or, you know, any additional questions, anyways? Dave? Who are you going to send the survey out to? What? If you send it to me, I could send you data, but I have no clue why someone or who someone picked that road to fix and why they picked that fix. So then you're talking to maintenance people, or it could be materials people, and so it could, be a, could have been done in the house, which then knows where the cost information for that is or was the contract. So it's, it seems like it's going to be kind of complicated to get to the end of the Absolutely agree. I know you, so I can just send it directly to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know some of the district folks, so I can send it to some of the district folks, but it's a little different. Again, when I get out of state, I'm not as certainly not as familiar with some of the other states. So we have uh, of each state has a member of this technical advisory panel. And so I'm going to send it to them with the expectation that hopefully they are able to gather that information over the next couple months. And I think they're on this group because they're interested in it. Um, and so definitely the success of this study is going to be based on how much information they can get back for us. So that's what I'm hoping. I mean, you might get an email from me, but uh, the, each payment management person won't in every state. I don't, at least not at this point. Uh, Jerry, I don't know. What's I, your thoughts Dave, on that? Dave, I think it's going to be really difficult. To, uh, and if we get a couple of good examples from all the states, I'm going to be fairly happy that this level of detail and what comes out, I think we're just going to have to wait and see. And, and then it's going to probably be a, a couple of people within the DOTs trying to, to pull together some of it. So. Yeah, tough question, tough part of the project. I think try to keep it as simple as possible, yet within the spirit of the in, intent of where you want to get to. Um, I hope, did the questions, and this is, I'm, I'm really looking for some input. Did the questions seem like they were going to be too much work for folks? Do you think, would you have a suggestion on making them, simplifying them at all? I mean, I, I would like to know. Well, just from my standpoint, it depends. I have 10 miles of road, and I could give you the real information on that. But when you've got tens of thousands of miles, and you've got the people with a lot of the raw data have no clue why or how many 
sections there are like that. Why the person did the treatment they did. So I mean, if that's who gets the question, they're going to look at it and say, well, I don't know any of this. So just a quick question, like on your in your system, your payment management, are you guys inputting the chip seals and things like that or no? Yeah. So well, that's. Like I say, we can tell you what the IRI is when we get things, but I can't tell you who to ask or you know, I can't tell oh, you. Oh, the narrative pieces. Yeah, you, because maybe there's a thousand sections like that. Well, you know, who are you going to talk to is to say, well, why did you do this one and this one? That so yeah, and that that may be where we maybe that lends credence to putting it out, putting out two, putting out a first initial uh, set of questions, maybe just the first five, and not asking for a narrative. In other words, identifying the projects and getting the performance data, and then once we get it in a group then start asking for the narrative stuff that would go to individuals who actually had the decision-making piece of that. Be, you know, it may be that there isn't that much thought to it. You know, if the road's crumbling and loose pieces are flying everywhere, it's like, I gotta cover this thing up. So it may be that there's a lot of them where there's not gonna be this real in-depth, you know, how many years are you expecting or what kind of distress is Yeah, I think that's, that's more just, Anecdotal, I think, because it doesn't matter what you were expecting. And maybe I need to modify that a little bit. I'm more concerned, and I think the study would be more beneficial if, what did you get? Um, uh, I think it's anecdotal what you were expecting. Um, does that, maybe, and maybe we can modify that. I can, we can, we can look at those again, but I'd like to get them sent out soon. So, but maybe what I'll do is, is modify and shorten them up to just data. The first one is just so you can, in your case, you can push a couple of buttons on your computer, and probably spit it all out and not ask for some of the narrative information at this point. It, it might slow down the process, and, and that's a good observation. What about Missouri? You're from Missouri. Yeah, that's what I say to do. We can make calls or a phone call to Mike Pig because he's your guy. I'll tell you right now, I can do it, but I don't want to do it. It's going to take a lot of time. So I think maybe respectfully, if you gave somebody, email them, we get surveyed all the time and push that off the side and make a direct contact with them, you'll know who I am in every one of those districts. So I, I made seven poor decisions in the last three years. I can tell you exactly why I made them, because they were really bad roads, but those people pay taxes too, was the argument back to me. So if you want, I'm going to give you a talk to Mike and maybe follow up with Mike, this is why we need this. Can you, because Mike's the liaison. In Jeff City, I assume. I think Mike's on this group. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I took his place. That's why I'm saying Mike. Oh. Mike was going to be you. Yeah. Uh, and say, hey, man, this is why we need it. And then he should have enough influence and or to get all these decisions from the, especially the rural districts. Uh, since mine's an urban district, I told you I made seven decisions. You can't imagine my counterparts double, triple. You should get a lot of information from us. So that'd be my advice. Sure. Well, you made decisions along with Dave Van Dusen then. So, <laughs> but, but, but in terms of the questions that we're asking, would it make sense then to break that down to just data questions to begin with that are obtainable, easy on the surface? That's kind of what the, and then, and then. We can query the database. In other words, I can type in WERO double one, which is for route A. Sure. And you can pull the amount of time we build to it. And you can pull, you know, the, the money we pay the equipment. So technically, yes, you can ask that question. But can you identify, and what I'm thinking is, we did these 10 roads where we put chip seals that were below, uh, say, a PSR of 2.7, and we did chip seals on them, and I have three years of performance data, and then we reconstructed. Could you pull, easily pull that kind of data out? Okay, what about yeah, Illinois? Illinois, come on. <laughs> Last, yeah, this, okay. So our, uh, I'm getting the hook. System is non-existent. So, but, oh, okay. So you uh, don't have a payment management system. We have a decent inventory system. Oh, okay. Um, the thing that I would be able to provide would be the districts usually call me for treatments on roads that they're clueless about. 
And I know of some down in some of our southern districts that we were like, we just kind of threw our hands up and said, we're just going to put a Band-Aid on it. So That's the one we're looking for. I've, I've got some of those in my head. I just need to make sure that they follow through with what we recommended. Yep. Or if they even did them at all. Yeah. So, um, I think in Jerry's case, if we can get two or three from each state, because I think in the end, a chip seal is going to be kind of grouped with some of these other things, Not maybe not a fog seal necessarily, but right. we're going to group some of these things. So I think there's some benefit, even if there's just a couple, three, four, five sections, a lot of benefit there, as long as we get that pre and post performance data and some cost data, um, you know, we'll simplify it, even though you see a long list of types. Um, so I'm getting the hook. I'll shorten my next one. 